Milo, listen to your grandma. I want you to come with me right now. We can't wait for your parents. This is happening everywhere. Pirates, looks like several bands, maybe more. They won't leave witnesses. I fought their kind, Milo. They'll loot the planet, then burn it. We've got to get underground. Never forget what you see, Milo. You owe it to everyone who's about to die. Hey, Sugar Pop, message incoming from the Terran Regional Representative. Tell the representative that I'm retired. The last thing I want to do is deal with a stuffed shirt. And, uh, don't call me Sugar Pop. Right. A wise and powerful maker of universes. Listen, this call is coded emergency. Maybe you shouldn't just put her off. The trouble with stuffed shirts is that when they blow up, they make a terrible mess. Put the representative through. Mr. Corda. I know you are retired, but we need you to deal with a very sensitive, very secret matter. Why bother me? Surely you have people on your own staff who can deal with this... whatever it is. You are the ranking human specialist in both terraforming and the creation of pocket universes. You are the only person who may be able to solve a problem that could, without exaggeration, threaten the continued existence of hundreds of thousands of sentient beings. Please, continue. Within the last half year, two privately owned pocket universes, Herbs and Orans, have been shut down. Time, effectively, has ceased to function within them. We need you to restart the universes and find out who is responsible for these atrocities. Although you will be working for the old Terran government, we prefer not to admit to interfering with private universes. You would be on your own. That's a pretty tall order. You realize that the key for each pocket universe is a carefully hidden secret known only to the universe's designer. We do know. That's why we need the best. Are you saying that you cannot do what someone else already has? If it is any comfort, there will be a large fee. Trying to get my gold, lady? Fee doesn't matter. Not much, at least. I'll admit, I'm interested in this from a professional point of view. Is there anything you can tell me to get me started? Our research shows that the designer of herbs is named Charlie Bell. We have a contact number. You may wish to call him and see if he can give you a clue to the key of herbs. We can supply you with the coordinates for herbs and orants. Beyond that, you're on your own. You haven't seen Charlie in centuries. Yeah, maybe I'll check with him. Remember, 
You will need a supply of bottle time to function in stasis. I do know my job. I have some on board. Can I, uh, draw on your account for supplies to get started? Within reason. Does this mean you are on the job? Write up a contract. And, though I may be doing this because I want to know who's good enough to turn off universes, don't forget the zeros in the paycheck. Thank you, Mr. Corda. Contract will be forwarded. She's gone, Sugar Bob. Don't call me that. Hello and welcome to Chronomaster. This is another game from my youth and one that I never completed. And I intend to complete it now. Well, not right now. In time. Throughout this Let's Play. And we have a very subdued sounding Ron Perlman. Well, relaxed, not subdued. The one thing I had with this game that stopped me from completing it is that there, uh, there are numerous ways to die. We will go through some of the mechanics momentarily. For now, let's contact this Charlie Bell. Corda? Renee Corda? It's been ages. How have you been? Pretty well, all things considered. Been living quiet since I retired, but uh, now I'm onto something rather fascinating. I picked up an odd bit of work. It has to do with a couple of pocket universes that have been put into stasis without the owner's authorization. You designed one of them. A place called Herbs. Yeah, I designed Herbs. Can't tell you who for, though. Professional ethics, right, old buddy? Did anyone come to talk to you about your work, say, within the last year? No, no one. And even if anyone did, I wouldn't say a thing. I remember the terms of my contract and the ethics of my profession. Easy, man. I'm not trying to get you barred from the union. Uh, listen, is there anything at all you can tell me that might help? Well, since you're dealing with a universe in stasis, you're going to need bottled time. Brush up on its limitations. There are some tricky aspects. Especially if the universe was fully functional and it was thrown into stasis. Thanks. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, uh, one more thing. The other universe that's been turned off is called Orens. You know anything about it? Actually, I do. The designer was an alien named Nizam Rokhtar. Do you know her? No, no. Can you uh, tell me anything about it? Not much. She's good at what she does. A bit vain, I've heard, but then aren't we all? <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. I'll uh, let you know how it turns out. Jester, my sweet. See if you can find me a contact number for an alien named Nizam Rokhtar. I'm on it. Hey, do you really think I'm sweet? Yes, yes, what do you want? I'm a busy artist. Universe is awake my awakening touch. She seems like a very interesting character. Is she a mouse? Anyway, let's greet her. Honorable Nizam Rakhtar, I am Rene Corda. Charlie Bell suggested that I call you. Rene Corda, I have heard of you. Before you retired, you set some jewels in the heavens. But why does Charlie Bell wish you to trouble me? I have nothing in common with him beyond our mutual profession. I am researching a difficult situation. Two universes, Herbs and Arms, have been put into unauthorized stasis. Charlie says you designed Arms. Anything you can tell me may help to reactivate the universe and find the criminal responsible. Truly, I would not deny one of my children. But Aurens is in the care of her new owner. I have nothing to say about my desert child. I'm pretty sure that flattery will get us somewhere here. I mean, we started off the conversation pretty flattering, so let's continue on with it. Ah, uh, Honorable Rakhtar. You were too kind when you spoke of my poor works as jewels. Compared to the beauties of your universes, they are poor rough stones. I would enjoy knowing more about your works for purely aesthetic reasons. Desert design is difficult. 
there is an art to the subtle arrangement of sand, rock, and plant life, it is a minimalistic art rather than the flashy, overblown styles of other terrains. I am certain. Your control at hearing that Orens has been shut down is admirable. You must be horrified. I am not happy. God's pockets paid me well for the job. Even though some of the design specifications were peculiar, the work is up to my high standards. God's pockets... Hmm. This... God's pockets must be an aesthetically sophisticated organization to have chosen both you and a desert world. Do you know how I might get in touch with them? No. They ordered Orange, paid me well, and then vanished. I believe that Clea Terrific was hired to do five other universes. Those must not have needed your unique touch. It must be difficult to hide a world key for a desert universe. You would lack the expanses of water or dense forests so many use to conceal such a sensitive item. For some, perhaps. But for me, it is a matter of art. I believe in placing the key in a place that, while difficult to penetrate, is in harmony with the greater purpose of the universe design. So for Orens, you would place it in a pile of sand? Orens is indebted both to the desert and to the Arabian Nights. I have set the key with it. Oh, but that would be giving away too much. You have a resonance tracer and a direction finder, do you not? So you intend to make me work for my pay, do you? Locating the key shall be easy enough with those devices and your legendary skill. Perhaps it will be. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you about your art. I leave your company enriched. Farewell. Jester. I've already looked up the contact number for Clea Triffitt, Cordicky. You were uh, eavesdropping? I live to serve you, O oh great and mighty creator of universes. You serve well, Jester. Just don't eavesdrop. Now, connect me to Clear Terrific. Um, I don't believe that it is too difficult for Jester to eavesdrop. Firstly, I believe Jester is the ship, so she is the computer. And secondly, her hologram is right here, next to the contact screen. Hello, this is Renee Corda. May I speak with Clear Terrific? I regret to inform you that Clea Terrific is no longer alive. I am in charge of her estate. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear of her death. I am researching some of her projects, specifically universes she may have designed for an organization called God's Pockets. I am sorry, but that is confidential information. Even though Clea Terrific is no longer alive, I am still bound by the ethics of her profession. I knew I was going to regret helping draft those rules a few centuries back. I don't believe there is any point in trying to bluff this gentleman. He seems like a professional man, so let's speak to him in a professional way. Sir, uh, I am not in a position to divulge full details, but I need to know whatever I can about Clea Terrific's work in order to save the lives of hundreds of thousands of sentient beings. Certainly, if you feel the need to keep confidential information for your employers, then you should understand my need to keep confidential information for my client. Oh, I do, sir. While I cannot divulge particulars, I can tell you the Terran regional government will be grateful for any information you may give. Grateful enough that they would rule favorably if a question of confidentiality is raised. Well, I suppose it is not violating confidentiality to confirm that Clea Terrific did design five universes for God's pockets. Five universes? Are you certain? Yes. They were listed in the files as Fortuna, Jungen, Cabal, Verdry, and Dice. Anything else about them listed in those files? No. In fact, the files themselves were destroyed in a massive fire shortly before Clea's death. She never spoke to me about the jobs. Once, when I asked her about them, she said that she was afraid that she had learned too much about God's pockets in the course of designing the universes. I see. Well, thank you very much for your help. I believe we are now in control. This is the main view screen. As you can probably guess, we are, we are on a spaceship. 
there's only two things we can sort of interact on this screen and that is the options up here and the view and the contact screen just here but we can't contact anyone right now On the right here is a in-game encyclopedia of some such. I may explore this a little, a little bit more further on into the game if we need to. Maybe a little bit more out of the game if necessary. the only other screen that we can access. Is the navigation screen just here. Now I believe we are on the universe selection screen at the moment and the only two options are herbs and aurans. And we're going to stick to herbs for the moment. And we also have information on each different planet. And as you can see, all but one are uninhabitable. And this screen here gives us a selection of different locations that we can be down to or land at. Let's start at the Magnetic North. Sugar Pop, remember, the resonance tracer goes on magnetic north, dead on. I packed it with your thing. It'll help you find the world key. Uh, boss, magnetic north is right where that, uh, big scary looking statue is standing. And this is the main bulk of the game, the, uh, the point and click section, as you can see. We have our standard options just here. This here is what the game calls a bottle time. I think this is a countdown of how much we have left. Uh, inventory screen is just here. Magnetic North is nearby, but this isn't the location. It must be obscured by something. Okay, I'm not sure what this is, is exactly. This is our bottle time. And we can actually use it on various objects or people in the game world. Our PDA is a portable encyclopedia, the one that we saw on the ship. This helps us locate the objective. And this is a multi-tool, which I will use shortly. I can't use that here. Okay, right. Now, to demonstrate this bottle time, please excuse me, I'm suffering from cold at the moment, so my voice is a bit fuzzy. The bottle time, you can see there is a bubble around us, and anything inside of it, time moves normally. And what we learned in the introduction is that there are at least two worlds at the moment that are completely in stasis and time is not moving but we can use the bottle time on, on objects to get a very limited area moving again or we can do this as you can see as we get closer to the birds it starts firing off but as soon as it exits our bubble it stops which will Come in handy for some puzzles later. Anyway, let's go and speak to the statue. Welcome to the Garden of Honor. You awaken. How fortunate. Are you able to move? In the days of the Great Conflict, 
the heroes of the fort, fast. Under Dieter's command, they stood unyielding. Obedient to orders, loyal to the homeland, they defended the holy soil of herbs with their lives. Okay, so this massive statue that could probably easily crush us with its foot. I am... Um, Intimidation may not be the best route. We could try to bluff, but I'm guessing this is some sort of AI. So let's try and reason with it. Most enlightening, though I am not here for the tour. Could you please move from that spot? I need to set up some equipment there. Who are you to ask this of me? I shall not leave my post for one such as you. Here I honor the heroes of the fort. To aid them in their struggle would bring glory without bounds. I see. So you can move if you wish, it's just a question of the right approach. Wait here, and I'll see what can be done. Okay, so let's have a short look around. This looks like some sort of memorial garden. And it's fairly small. You never know, with the universal tool, even a rock can be useful at times. <laughs> at least we have quite a peaceful start. And uh, just a quick demonstration of the multi tool. Okay. I know it's not exactly impressive, but it's a demonstration. I'm guessing that one of the puzzles involves a flag and this flagpole. The people of Herb seem very patriotic. This is a peaceful place. It is, but that is probably because there is no one else here. I believe we have done... <coughs> Shut up. Everything that we need to do here. Let's head now to the city. So there is actually no beaming down, it is all taken off and landing. Okay, well, at least it's clean. And at least it's strong. That is of no interest to me. Uh, if this guy is jumping, I would believe that there is some interest of what's going on here. I mean, what is that behind him? Bomb! Jump for it! Oh. Thankfully, at the moment, it is out of range. And I believe there is a way to get through this door. Well... 
So I'm told. I believe there is a way to get past this bomb and through the door without it going off. Yes, there is the arrow. But where is the fun in that? And this gives us a chance as well as to demonstrate these time capsules. Get out. I don't think that we will be going this way. So that is pretty much the main mechanics shown off. Let's get more into the meat of the game.